The Roland SH2 is my favorite vintage monophonic analog synthesizer, and we'll talk about why that is in a bit, but it's been a personal quest of mine to find a modern budget alternative. Today we're looking at two contenders, the Arturia Mini Brute 2 and the Behringer Wasp, and comparing their sounds to this vintage beast. Zach Marr from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications. This is our Alamo Sound Lab channel where we talk about all things music technology related. And today we're looking at the Roland SH2 and comparing it to the Arturia Mini Brute 2 and the Behringer Wasp. So the Roland SH2 is considered to be one of the best analog monophonic synths ever created. And it comes from a classic 70s Roland era where most of their analog synths were completely discrete. There wasn't um, DCOs being used, there wasn't chip VCOs being used. These were pretty complex, um, somewhat, it was the, still the primitive age of electronics and so the way that these were constructed were pretty pretty complicated. The, the, the VCO board, if you look at it, it's got a ton of components on it as opposed to the VCOs found five years later which was just a little chip. Um, and they have very different tones, and they're considered to be their own thing. It comes from the era of the Jupiter 4, the System 100, the Roland Pro Mars, and they sound pretty different, the Jupiter 8 also. They sound pretty different than later Roland synths like the um, Jupiter 6 or the, the Juno 106, some of the mid-80s analog synths, which used a lot more digital componentry um, and also used a lot more um, software in kind of the control of the signal path. So this is considered to be a classic. It's it's unique in its tone. There's not really, a, it, as far as I can tell, there's been no modern recreations. There is a SH2 emulation um, from Roland called, uh, it's one of their plugouts that you can um, get from the cloud and I think it may be in the system one. but. There really isn't anyone that's tried to recreate this um, spec for spec, um, and I think it's cost prohibitive. A lot of the manufacturers have steered clear from recreating discrete analog synthesizers because they're more expensive to make and it's not necessarily modern manufacturing. So it's kind of unique sound. People still seek it, seek after it. It's not a terribly complex synth, but it works really well. It's got two VCOs that are pretty awesome sounding when combined. It also has a sub oscillator, which really you can beef up the tone. And the, the, the filter and its classic Roland, it's, I think it's a, uh, a two-pole filter, and it, has, it self oscillates really nicely when you get into the higher resonance, and it really just works. This synthesizer works incredibly well, the bend, from the bender to just the, um, to the interface, it just sounds fantastic and it's sought after. This one has been um, kind of, I think it originally it didn't have oscillator sync, this has os sync, it kind of retrofitted as well as MIDI, and that's a pretty common upgrade that you can find on the SH2 that makes it uh, more easily connectable to kind of a modern setup. So that's a little bit about the SH2. So the Mini Brute 2 and the Behringer Wasp, in my opinion, are since modern sense, budget modern sense that approximate the sound of the Roland 2 SH2 pretty closely. You can get similar sounds and they're a lot of fun to play with. The Mini Brute 2 is interesting in that it is a discrete VCO. So that's, I think, unique um, to kind of the major manufacturers. There's not a lot of major manufacturers that are creating discrete VCOs and not using integrated circuits. The designer behind the VCO is a guy that's still living named Yves Usan, and he's kind of the, what's the brains behind the circuitry of the Mini Brute and the Micro Brute, and really is considered to be a little bit of a living legend. And he's still alive and he's still designing um, since with Arturia, and they're really awesome. It's kind of interesting that Arturia started out as a software company, has moved into hardware, and has moved into analog hardware. They're analog drum machines and their synthesizers are some of the best on the market in my opinion. 
They're very powerful and they are definitely informed from the history that they've been emulating with their software for years. So what's similar about the Mini Brute 2 and the SH2 is that they both have two VCOs. They both are discrete VCOs. The filter is different. This has a Steiner Parker filter, which has a different kind of tonal characteristic than the vintage Roland kind of classic filter sound. But, and it's a two pole, not a four pole filter, but the filter is its own thing in the Mini Brute 2. It's, it's pretty powerful. It's not just a low pass filter. It's also I got band pass and, uh, and I think a notch and uh, high pass. It's, it's got four different modes and it really works fairly well. It's got two LFOs where the original SH2 just has a single LFO. And then it has a mod matrix that allows you to kind of turn it into a semi-modular uh, synth, which is interesting and completely different than the SH2. So the layout is similar, as you can see. It's got the, the mod wheels on the side. It's got a kind of small keyboard. What the Arturia has that the, that the Roland does not, it also has a sequencer and a really fun arpeggiator. I think this is one of the most fun modern arpeggiators found in any kind of analog synth. It's really, it's got a, um, a whole bunch of different patterns and a whole bunch of different kind of times since you can get some really crazy sounds out of it. And it also has a sequencer, which again is not found in um, SH2, was not common to be found. I don't think it was in any synth at this time in the 19, 1979. Um, if it was, it was really new. And so it's, it's similar um, in its kind of architecture and the kind of... Uh, filter, dual VCO, pure analog path. And the tones you get out of it are, you can get very similar tones. And so we're gonna demo that so you can hear it. And it, I think it shines both in the low end and the high end and does um, great leads as well as great kind of bass patches, which is the SH2 does both really well. And then it's also incredibly affordable. The SH2, you know, it's going to run you a thousand to two thousand bucks. This is a couple hundred dollars, and so it's way more affordable. It's got these. It's, it's beautiful. It's got great wood paneling. It's really well built. Again, I'm confused that our, how Arturia keeps their price points so low because these are pretty full featured um, analog sense. I think it's a great option. You can listen to it and kind of see for yourself if it's similar. Um, if you like it, it's a great option. Uh, now let's move on to the Behringer Wasp. So the Behringer Wasp is a recreation of a classic British synthesizer designed by Chris Huggett, who is also the brains behind a lot of the Novation, the base station, and also some of the modern um, Novation synths like the uh, Summit and the Peak. He is also, he, he just passed away this year, but he was a living legend up until this year and contributed a lot to classic kind of synthesizer history in the Wasp. And there's another one called the Oscar. And they had a company, he had a company in the 70s, um, EDP, which I think it was Electronic Dream um, Productions or something. Um, and they, uh, they developed a couple classic budget analog synths for the time. The Deluxe Wasp originally had a kind of, uh, didn't have a keyboard with it. It had this like touch, this touch pad. It, it was a, uh, just like a, it's almost like the Arturia Microfreak, Micro Freak, where it's not actual keys, but it was con, it was designed as a kind of budget um, monophonic synthesizer that made it more gave you some of the features you found at, at, at more popular options at the time at a lower price point, and it's unique in that it was one of the only synthesizers designed in the UK, and it's sought after and and respected. I kind of wrote off the Behringer Wasp clone. I didn't know the history. There's a great uh, YouTube video by Alex Bell where he goes over it. And I think this is kind of like a underrated Behringer clone. The Wasp Deluxe, I think for, at least for Americans, a lot of us didn't know the history of the, of the, the Wasp and its importance. And so I don't think it's been as popular or as well received as some of the other clones of the of uh, synths like the Model D. But when you listen to it, it's super fat. It's got an amazing bass. You can make some really fat bass tones with it, and it's really fun to play with. And it reminds me a lot of the bass tones you get 
with the SH2, sp specifically with its two VCOs and kind of the making a similar patch in it. What's interesting about it is DCOs. This is one of, I think, the earliest uses of DCOs um, that, I, that I've been able to find. But the original had DCOs. It wasn't, um, they were digitally controlled oscillators and not voltage controlled oscillators. And so it's interesting. The, this is a DCO as well. Um, and, but it doesn't seem to affect the tone, in my opinion, that much. It doesn't, it doesn't sound that different when you get in those kind of lower patches to the SH2. The filter on the WASP is also considered to be kind of classic. I don't know. It's, it's its own thing. You can actually, I think there's another company that makes a replica module for modular systems that's just the filter. And the filter on this is, uh, I think it's a, another multi-mode filter. Um, I think it's got a high pass, low pass, band pass, um, notch as well. Um, and it's really magical. You combine that with its oscillators and the filter and you get tones that are very similar to the SH2. Also incredibly affordable. I think it's a little bit of a sleeper. So let's listen to both of these and compare it to the sounds in the SH2. We're not gonna do a patch per patch comparison. We're just gonna kind of play through some tones and then on each one and, and you can kind of hear. Um, but if you want SH2, I think these are good, two good modern alternatives to an actual SH2. I didn't specifically include any Moog products. Moog makes a lot of great monophonic modern synthesizers, but I think the Moog sound is different than the classic Roland sound. It's its own thing, and I think that they're doing amazing things, and I really like what they've put on the market, but it's really a different beast, so I, I don't think they approximate the SH-2. I don't think they're uh, bad by any means, and I do think they're unique, and if you like the Moog sound, it's its own, it's got its own history and its own kind of uh, sonic palette, almost like, you know, Fender versus Gibson. But I don't, if someone's wondering why there is no Moog as a possible alternative SH2, I just don't think they sound similar. And again, that's my personal opinion. But I did want to say that just as kind of a uh, afterthought, because I think th they are making amazing products right now. And, um, and someone might wonder that. So, Without any more talking, let's listen and you can kind of decide for yourself. Thank <laughs> you. 
So you can kind of hear for yourself how they're similar and how they're different. Definitely not identical, not intended to be clones of the SH-2, but you can get a lot of similar sounds, and if you like the sonic palette of an SH-2, I think these are two good options to get there. The Mini Brew 2 is a lot more complicated than either of these two synths. You can do a lot more. It's got a lot more depth. Um, the Wasp, the Lux, is pretty straightforward and simple, much, much like the SH-2. They're actually, it's actually, I think, in some ways simpler than the SH-2, but it is an awesome module, and I think it's a lot of fun. So what are your thoughts? Share them below. Are there other options on the market that we're unaware of that you'd like to hear in comparison to the SH-2? Again, this is kind of a gold standard for me for monophonic analog synths. But what did we miss? Any facts that we need to correct, please let us know be below. And if you want to talk to us more, you can find us at alamomusic.com. Chat with us, give us a call, and thank you for watching.